Chairman, uh, Under Secretary Newland, welcome. I certainly appreciate you spending some time with us last night in a secured briefing. Uh, and I think it's important that you're here today. Uh, I, I want to associate myself with remarks of the Chairman and the, and the ranking member. I think if there's one thing that Vladimir Putin ought to understand is how unified we are. I mean, we, there are many things that divide us politically in this country, but when it comes to pushing back on Russian aggression, um, supporting countries like Ukraine that are trying to develop their freedom, free themselves from the legacy of corruption from their former involvement with the Soviet Union, uh, we are very strongly united. Um, often, you know, within this discussion, you, you were talking about an uh, unprecedented level of uh, sanctions. I think it would be important for uh, the public, for the Senate, for Congress, uh, but for Vladimir Putin to, to really understand in somewhat granular detail what we're talking about, uh, what we would impose on them and how, how harmful it would be to Russia. You know, unfortunately, to Russian people. Uh, but Vladimir Putin ought to be concerned about the Russian population uh, more concerned than we are. Uh, we can't allow this. So can you really describe the types of sanctions that you are contemplating and pushing with our European allies? Senator, thanks for, thanks for that statement of, of unity and for, for your strong statement here today. Um, as we discussed last night in some detail, uh, what we are talking about would amount to essentially isolating Russia completely from the global financial system with all of the fallout that that would entail for Russian business, for the Russian people, for their ability to to work and travel and trade, uh, and we are looking at the full suite of options. Um, I think in the, in the context of the diplomacy that we are doing and the work that we're doing internally, I was gratified to have a chance to go through some of those specific measures in the classified session yesterday, um, but going beyond that in this open session I think um, doesn't um, help us get from here to there, but we, every, everything is on the table, I would say, if, if that is helpful. One thing that I believe certainly the Senate Foreign Relations Committee is pretty unified on, it may not be unanimous, was our support for sanctions against uh, Nord Stream 2 pipeline. And that I think we were all, many of us, were very disappointed that uh, those sanctions were not fully implemented and the construction continued. Um, I can't think of a, a more powerful way to punish uh, Russian aggression than by rolling back what progress has been made and if at all possible, uh, prevent the Nord Stream 2 from ever being completed. Uh, is that something that is being discussed with allies? Is that something that's being contemplated? Absolutely. And as, if, as you recall from the July U.S.-German statement, that was very much uh, in that statement that if that any moves Russian aggression against Ukraine uh, would have a direct impact on the pipeline, and that is our expectation and the conversation that we're having. So again, direct impact is one thing, but I, I'm, I'm literally talking about rolling back the, the, the pipeline. You, know, it, you can loosely define that, but I mean taking action that will prevent it from ever becoming operational. I think if President Putin moves on Ukraine, our expectation is that the pipeline will be suspended. Well, I certainly hope uh, that the Senate Foreign Relations Committee would take up uh, legislation to go beyond just suspending it, but from ending it permanently. But anyway, thank you, uh, Undersecretary Newland.